I have never run away from home, but I know a few friends that have because they've had different situations and they haven't felt comfortable staying at home, so they just needed to take a break and go. I've never known anyone who's run away from home. I do know some people who have tried. I have friends that have. I do know someone that ran away from home and they came home probably two or three weeks later. I got into an argument with my dad and we have had a lot of problems in the past and it was like one in the morning and I walked five miles to my friend's house and as soon as I got there her mom called my dad and he had to come pick me up personally. When I was younger I ran away from home. Sometimes when things get too hard at your house you just you don't want to be there you gotta try and find somewhere to go. My parents went through a bad divorce so it was I, I ran away before. I had a stepmother who was just kind of unfair and uh, made my dad a little abusive so Whenever times got rough, I just packed my things and left. I have threatened to run away, but I never actually like followed through with it. Uh, definitely not. No, I haven't. No, I never have. I've never felt the urge to run away. My family is very close. I don't know, I wasn't appreciated, so I felt like if I threatened them that I would leave, then they'd appreciate me. I have had the urge to, but just knowing that it wouldn't be the greatest opportunity and I'd lose so much from running away, I just totally just did not even double think the decision to not. I'm out of here. I can't take it anymore. I'm gonna leave home. Have you ever felt this way? I think we can all be honest for a moment and admit that many of us have either said this or thought this at one point in our lives. It taps into our fight or flight instinct when we are faced with danger, anger, or fear. Sometimes it just seems easier to run away from our struggles. And sometimes life can give us a lot of challenges that seem overwhelming and can make it feel impossible to even survive the bad situation and get to a better place. We can romanticize what it would be like to be free and to have complete power over our own decisions. Yet, we don't consider the cruel reality of life on the streets. Runaway teens, that's what we'll be talking about today. Hi everyone, I'm Maddie. And I'm Nick. And, and this, this is, is Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. A few of the teens on the street we met at the beginning of the show had some first-hand experience with running away, while others would never consider it an option. We'll talk with them more a little later, as well as meet our spotlight guest, Marcel Quinones an outreach manager for Covenant House, New Jersey. But first, let's meet our studio guests and find out what they know or have experienced when it comes to runaway teens. All right, Maddie, today in the studio we have Christian. Allie. Gabrielle. Vanessa. John. And Ariana. So have any of you run away or considered running away? I have never considered running away as if like pack my bags and be like, oh, I'm out of here, like I'm done. But I, I can understand why like some people would want to. If they were in an abusive house, I could understand. And then I could also understand just in situations in my life wanting to restart and like get like, just get a new life and you know, make new friends, go to a new place. I can understand why people would think about leaving when it times to like get rough in my house and like I've definitely threatened to before but I've never actually gone through because I think of what my family would deal with and like go through if I actually did. In the heat of the moment and like like everybody's fighting and like emotions are running high I could see like the words slipping out like oh I'm gonna run away like I hate you. It's like a rash decision like oh I'm gonna do this like and you don't really think about it right away but like once you start to like think about it you're like oh gosh I really don't want to do this that would not be a good outcome for myself. I've never thought about running away myself, but my brothers run away after getting in like big fights with my mom. He'll go to like my grandparents' house for like a day or a couple hours or whatever it is. But like it becomes such a mess between our families and just everyone starts arguing. So that kind of just makes you want to not run away even more because it ends up hurting everybody. I've never thought about it, but one time my sister and mom had to run away and like I stayed put because I didn't want to see, you know, people get hurt or the problems that it causes down the line. Way before I was born, my sister was adopted by my dad and my mom. And, but before they actually got to adopt her, she was abused by two other foster families. So she had a lot of deep-seated issues and she was actually diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, which is a type of bipolar disorder that um, it makes her emotions very hard to control and it makes her kind of uh, attention hungry. When she was 16 years old, she attempted suicide by swallowing um, a bottle of Prozac. 
And after that, she chose to live in a foster family instead of with my family and my mom and dad. That can kind of be considered running away because she wasn't living at home anymore. It affected me a lot in my own life because I know even today, uh, asking my mom about it because uh, I was only three years old when she did run away. Um, my mom still gets teary-eyed when she talks about it and it's still kind of um, a situation that haunts my family even, you know, how many years later. So I would just say to a teen who's thinking about running away, just think about the effect that it would have on your loved ones and your family. The National Runaway Switchboard reports that between 1.6 and 2.8 million teens run away every year. And we run away for all sorts of reasons. Abuse, addiction, pregnancy, stress, and failure. Let's go back to the teens on the street and find out why they think some teenagers run away. And what they think is scary about running away. They don't want to follow their parents' rules anymore. They're not treated right or like they don't like where they're living. Their parents like will beat them. Their parents won't accept them if they don't get all A's. They feel that they, they aren't being loved. Feeling alone. To run away from problems, you know, if parents are fighting. Sometimes when it gets too hard, you just want to get away and you think it will be easier somewhere else. Maybe they get grounded and want to keep doing what they're doing, so they run away. The scariest part of running away is not knowing where you're going to go. Not knowing if someone's like looking for you. After you calm down, I think it's uh, thinking about where you're going to go. If anyone will be like really mad at you and like what punishment you'll get. Their biggest fear was being there alone by themselves. I'm used to my parents always being there for me, so like if I ran away, I wouldn't have them anymore. You don't know where you're going to go, you don't know what you're going to do, you're going to be scared. How to survive, like money-wise, you know. You're a teenager, you don't really have an income. So many people think, oh, well, I'll just leave and I'll go here, but here will only last so long, or going to this person, you know, they can only take you for so long. Not having your parents there, like, you don't have any advice, no one to tell you what you're doing right or doing wrong, and you're kind of on your own, and when you're that young, I don't think your mind's capable of being on your own. Our spotlight guest, Marcel Quinones, works for the largest privately funded charity in the Americas, providing food, shelter, immediate crisis care, and essential services to homeless, throwaway, and runaway kids. Marcel had a rough life growing up in the Bronx. Eventually, he straightened himself out and now devotes his life to helping troubled teens get back their lives. Next, he talks about why teenagers run away from home and what life is like living on the streets. There's many influences that have young people feeling like they may need to run instead of actually seeking out help first. We have young people that I deal with on a regular basis that have been neglected, they have been abused, raped. Some have been physically, emotionally, mentally abused where they've been told there would never be nothing. You're just like your father or you're just like your mother. Maybe they're failing in school and not getting the support that they need. And they figure running away will be the best option. But then you also have situations where you have young people that mom and dad don't want to let me go to the popular party or, or hang out with my friends. I want to go to the mall. They won't let me. So you know what? I'm going to leave. And then when they hit the street, they realize that maybe I shouldn't have did this. So there's many reasons for running away. We have about 1.6 million teens that run away each year. With about 36 to 3,700 on any given night are outside, wandering and sleeping in the street. Some of the biggest challenges that young people face when they run away, if I don't have money in my pocket, how am I gonna eat? Where am I gonna stay? What is considered safe? So how am I gonna survive? And that's very scary. I've seen young people go for days without eating. And, and it breaks my heart to see the struggle that they face when they go out there and they have no money in their pocket. Nobody wants to help them. People just pass them by. You know, I've seen young people in, in train stations begging for change, but they have no choice because once they left, there was no turning back in some cases. You know, there are parents in some situations where once the teenager decides to leave home and run away, the parents are like, you're on your own. Another major child, who do you trust? Anybody can take advantage of you. Anybody can feed you hopes and dreams. And at the end of the day, only have their best interests at heart. I feel so terrible for these kids, you know, the way he was describing how people just pass them by in the street. But one thing that gives me hope is uh, he said how you could always 
make good decisions next. And you know, you can't always control what happens to yourself in life, but you could always control how you feel and what happens next. One of the things you said was uh, throwaways, and he explained that in the spotlight. I can't imagine what that's like yeah. to be considered a, a throwaway. I can't imagine how scary and like horrifying, just like that emptiness, nothingness, like alone. We like fight for pro-life and like for how much like a single life means to the world, but now that life is older. Now they're a person. They had all these dreams and they grew up and now nobody cares about them. Why aren't we helping them? That's what doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, and another thing that struck me was um, when he said that he's seen kids like that haven't ate, like haven't eaten food, and it just like, it makes me like want to go out and help them. It gives me like inspiration, and I hope that by him spreading his message, he gives that feeling to other people to help them help others and like reach out to those, like you said, throwaways. According to a web article on Yahoo Voices, if you are considering running, you're not alone. In fact, some of the top searches on Yahoo are, should I run away from home and I want to run away from home. Sadly, thousands of teens every year think about running away. And many succeed. Our spotlight guest Marcel was not a runaway teen, although he was homeless for periods of time while growing up. He spent a lot of time living on the streets. When Marcel was seven, his dad left and his mother, who battled addictions, couldn't maintain their apartment. For a couple of years, they had no home, moving in and out of different relatives' homes and different shelters. Let's hear his story of survival and recovery now. Technically, we were not homeless anymore, but the way her addiction was consuming her, I still was in the street a lot because I would not want to come home because she would be intoxicated. There was times she would be in a bathtub with the water running and passed out from drinking all day. It was very difficult. And I found myself in the street for, for a lot of years, just lost. Bad crowds and, and influences became my family. And I started using and selling drugs at the same time. That was not the way I wanted to go, but I felt I had no choice. Eventually, um, there was a next door neighbor of mine that was going through his own struggles, dealing with addiction. He decided to change his life around. And in the process, he took me with him, spending time with me playing basketball. Any job, he got little side jobs, he would take me with him. And I really feel like that's the person that started making that change for me, where I started realizing that it, there is other things that I can do besides hanging out on the street and, and just getting into trouble. At first, I didn't realize that I would be okay. It was a sense of hopelessness. I just didn't believe that it was gonna get better for me. Witnessing people die and getting shot and having a gun put to my head, to me it was just like I was a lost cause. And when I really started getting involved with my next door neighbor and, and, and being able to go out there and play basketball and, and I would get away from the neighborhood for a while and even for a few hours, it gave me a peace of mind. I started seeing the potential of, okay, maybe this doesn't have to be my life, but I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't an easy process. And I still found myself in certain trouble, but little by little, the trouble was less because I started making better decisions. My sister, she was offered so much help for herself. She was offered family counseling, but she refused to go. And she was offered a um, foster home, but she kept running away from that. Even though she rejected her own form of help, I know um, for any teen who might find themselves in this situation, I think they should really look for people who are going to try to help them and look for someone they can trust and someone they can go to to help them get back on the right path. I can't imagine it's easy. I mean, I have a friend who considers running away a lot and he'll text me and like ask me about it. And I think it's important to know that you shouldn't go through something like that alone. You need to have people who like support you and care about you because when you're thinking about running away, you're not in the same like mindset at, does, that you would be in otherwise. So you need someone there to like push you back into like the right state of mind. While in recovery in Florida, Marcel transforms himself from client to caregiver. Next, he tells us about how he discovered his gift and passion to help troubled teenagers. And how Covenant House helps runaways. Let's hear what happened next. 
When you come from a big city, you, you tend to believe that there's only problems in the big city. And then you start realizing there's no difference. Teenagers struggle no matter where they are. When I went to Florida and, and, and I wanted to see how can I help these kids. And that was when I started getting my first real experience. And I was going on 19 at the time. That experience truly took me to another level because I seen the pain and the hurt that they were going through. I seen that I, I have the ability to help these kids, even if it's just talking to them, giving them some sort of advice. It's been my passion. A lot of teenagers are not gonna go looking for the help. And that's one of the beauties of, of working for an organization like Covenant House. We help young people on a daily basis. It may start off with a sandwich, with a bottle of water, but before you know it, they start opening up and allowing us to come into their lives and seeing how we can help them. I've seen young people come into Covenant House from the worst of worst situations, whether abused, neglected, raped, victims of human trafficking. And some of them are graduating college now. Some of them have gone on to help young people. They have to find a sense of pride, a sense of self, of who they are. A lot of teenagers I see are very easily influenced. It doesn't take much for somebody to come along and say, hey, let's do this, and okay, and we're not gonna give up on you. If a young person comes in and leaves, we're gonna do whatever we can to try to get them back in the program. But we understand it has to be their decision. You can't be forced to change, because then it's not true change. Last year, we had to bury a young person who left the program and was shot. It was heavy on all of us. You start wondering, like, what did you do wrong? Where did we drop the ball? But we had to realize that that young person made a decision, and unfortunately, a consequence came out of it that we were not happy with. So that's why I cherish, cherish every little blessing possible. Next, Marcel tells us about a call to Covenant House concerning a troubled young lady from Wisconsin who was stranded at a hotel in Edison, New Jersey. Let's hear that story now. She decided to run away with another friend who had a guy that supposedly was gonna help them out. She wakes up that morning at the hotel and the girl and the guy left her and took the money that they had saved. She can't stay there. She has nowhere else to go. One of the workers felt bad and decided to Google a place for teens. Covenant House happens to come up and she was able to come to the program, went to pick her up that same day and then we helped her get back on her feet. And she realized she made a mistake. A lot of the kids that I encounter on the street, they need to believe that things are gonna get better for them. If you mention God, it's like, I don't wanna hear it. To them, God is the reason they're in this situation. And at that moment, all that I can do is open my arms to them and show them God's love through me because not everybody believes, and some that want to believe at that moment don't want to hear it. So all I can do is, the same way Christ loved us, I have to love them. And that's why I said, just building that relationship with them, if it's a sandwich, if it's water. I may hear from them six months later, Marcel, I'm ready to come in, I need help. Or they may jump in the van the same day. We have vans that go out throughout the streets in New Jersey from Atlantic City to Newark. And, and I feel like that's how we get through to them because they see that there's people out there that do care and have their best interests at heart. The National Runaway Switchboard also reports that staff at runaway and homeless shelters say that 63% of the runaways that they work with are depressed. 50% have problems at school. 20% have drug and alcohol abuse problems. And 17% have been in the juvenile justice system. Life on the streets almost always leads to dangerous situations. As Marcel just spoke about, even death. Let's hear his advice on why we shouldn't resort to running away and how to help a friend that may be considering this. And if they're deciding that running away is an option for them, I'm truly hoping that they've done all they can before that final step by talking to someone and letting someone know their circumstances and what's going on. School, churches, authorities, neighbors, friends of friends, whomever is willing to listen to you, talk to them, weigh out your options. If it's a dangerous environment and maybe there's something you, you really do need to leave, have a plan put in place. If you know someone is being abused, if you know someone is having problems in the home, don't stay silent. 
If you have to go speak to a teacher or somebody, go out there and be that support for them. Sometimes young people let their emotions really get in the way of making better decisions. I'm guilty of it. You know, I was walking around for many years with hate and, and bitterness and, and resentment. I didn't know what to do, like what was gonna happen. That was so scary. And I feel like teenagers face the same obstacles. Like, what am I gonna do? It's getting dark now. Where am I gonna go? There's only so much you could sleep on somebody's couch before it's like, okay, you gotta go. It's, it's horrifying to be out there not knowing what's gonna happen, not knowing how I'm gonna eat. Can I take a shower tonight? Something simple as that. They come in dirty, hungry, broken, and even after taking a shower, it's amazing how you see everything start lifting off of them. And they just have a sense of, of stability, even if it's for that moment. He really like, struck me hard when he said, you know, I have some where I have seen them graduate college. I've seen them get back on their feet and go and live the life I know that they're supposed to. And then there's some where, you know, they didn't make it. They had to be buried. That at least strikes me as a core, just because I know those people where they don't know what path they're gonna go yet. My sister, um, she was beautiful. She was incredibly smart, gifted. She got a 99 percentile on whatever standardized test she took, and she threw a lot of it away. And you know, that's the thing that gets my parents the most is that she had so much on the table that she could have done with her life and she could have been so successful. You have to look at what you have and you have to make good decisions. These stories just really remind me of my cousin and I didn't even know why I don't think, I didn't think of this before, but she ran away when she was about 16 and uh, she did not think that she had it good even though she did and she has nothing now. She's been to like eight different family members' homes and she's been kicked out of all of them because she just, they can't have her there any longer. She misses having that home that she had before, that stability, and you know, it's, it, it's rough. I like what he said before when um, he said how change is difficult but, and it's gonna hurt. Like I have a friend who I was texting all night and told me like she was going to run away. She was like thinking about it and she stopped texting me all of a sudden. And if I hadn't called her mom that night at 3.30 in the morning, I don't know where she would be right now. So I'm glad I could be that person, even though it means like we're, we're not really talking right now because she doesn't, like she's upset with me. But like I'm glad I could be that person that could help her to get back on her feet. Next, Marcel tells us how his relationship with God and Christ's example, seeking and saving the lost, inspires him in his work with runaway teens. When things get tough now, I know that God is still in control. I believe that he's with us no matter what, the good, the bad, the ugly. And that's what I try to show to these young people, God's love. And yes, when I was younger, I was angry. I felt that either God was not real or <laughs> I must have did something that he doesn't like. And <laughs> you know, now I'm being punished for it. I don't believe he was punishing me. Every person makes their own decisions and their own choices. So a lot of what happened was my own doing. Thankfully, I was able to learn from it. Oh, trust me, it's not easy. You will have obstacles, and when you see things starting to get better, a whole lot of storms are gonna come. But you gotta stay faithful in those storms. You have to believe that these storms are temporary situations. Believe in yourself, believe in your ability, and dig up that courage to face it and stand strong through it. I just think about how Christ went out there to the least of these. He never turned his back on anyone. To me, just his example being that evidence of God's love is, is what I take with me and what inspires me when I go out there and working with these young people. You know, they may have had a brother or father who turned their back on them, someone that promised them the world and never followed through on, every, on anything. I don't want to be that person. I want to be that person that if I tell you I'm going to make a phone call for you, I'm going to make a phone call. If I tell you I'm going to bring you food, I'm going to bring you food. I'm not going to judge you. I've approached gang members, girls that are selling themselves in the street. All I've seen was a young person that needs our help. And that's how I approach it every single day, is how can I help this young person despite who they are, what they've been through. I want to help them in this moment. Something that um, you said before, Nick, that 
you know, as long as you're alive, you always have a chance to move forward and you can always turn your life around for the better. And that really touched me because I know, you know, out there somewhere, my sister is living her life and, you know, she didn't, you know, thank God she didn't die years ago. But since she's alive out there somewhere, there's always hope for her. Many of us have decent homes and living conditions. But there are many others whose home is the streets. Their situation may feel hopeless and futile. Like this homeless young lady who is quoted in this post on the Homeless America blog. I would rather be homeless. It is cold and miserable on the streets, but it is better than being beaten up by parents who don't care. An important way to help at-risk teenagers like this young lady in the blog is to become an advocate. Covenant House has a political action network with a full-time presence in Washington, D.C., speaking up for the homeless and at-risk youth. For more information, go to their website, covenanthouse.org. And for real, we as teens play a part in recognizing when one of our peers may be at risk. So have you helped a friend through a desperate situation who felt like running away? Tell us your story. We'd love to hear from you. Contact us at realfaithtv.com. Or send us a tweet. And when you are feeling hopeless, alone, and down, maybe remembering the words King David wrote in Psalm 61 will bring you comfort and hope. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call, my heart grows faint. Raise me up, set me on a rock, for you are my refuge. A tower of strength against the foe. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Take refuge in the shelter of your wings. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.